checking connection you are now live day two hopefully my phone doesn't run out on uh, Instagram and hello Facebook day two on how to utilize protein for fat loss my nice word fat loss and energy when you're over 40 Say hi if you're joining in on both platforms. I'm doing the double old school today, um, coming at you with day two. So day one we had yesterday, if you missed it, we talked about uh, what is protein, why it's important, uh, and why do we metabolize it differently now that we're over 40? Okay, why do we metabolize it differently? And just as a quick recap, before we dive into day two, and day two we're gonna be talking about um, how do you know if you're getting enough and how do you utilize it for for fluff loss? Talk to me, Moni, right? Yesterday we talked about what protein is and I talked about it being this complex, could be a quad form all the way into a single amino acid. Why that's important to you is to realize that protein has a high thermogenic effect, meaning it takes our body and systems a lot of energy to break it down. For that reason, it also has a great satiation effect. It keeps us fuller for longer. And we need protein in our diets, and then I'm talking plant-based or animal-based, okay? We're gonna be talking about incomplete and complete proteins a little bit today. We need protein in our diets because it's a building block for cells, and it also creates a structural framework around how hormones communicate to other organs and systems in our body because hormones are messengers, okay? I know most of the time we like to give them the finger, but there are messengers. They communicate what is going on within um, our bodies and up here too, I will say. So we know that protein is our builder. It's our building block, it's our structure. We do not store it like we do fats and carbohydrates. We synthesize it and degrade it on our own, utilize it on our own, okay? How it's different at this stage of the game of over 40 and how we utilize it and how that's different is because of just good old age. Even though we don't feel our age, I'm 49, this is a 49 year old physiology and there is an imbalance between our protein synthesis, how we're making protein and our degradation, how we are using it. So for that reason, we must just adapt, okay, how we are ingesting our protein. If the goal is stronger, leaner, shed some of that hormonal fluff that we feel, let me know if we feel it around here, okay, um, and energy, stable energy through the day, okay, and just well-being. So today we're going to be talking about how do you know if you're getting enough protein? Because there is such a thing as too much, right? Too much of a good thing turns into a detriment, right? So um, too much protein, there's um, specific uh, diseases and um, conditions where you have to be very conscious of your protein intake. So again, like I mentioned yesterday, make sure you talk to your, your healthcare practitioner around that. As well as too much protein can lead to things like heart disease, kidney stones. So we need to be very conscious and not just pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Okay. Um, how much you actually, how do we know we're getting enough? I'm going to give you um, five, I think I have five areas that you can look into. You can do the food calculus. Okay. In our 3M system and the 3M accelerator, we are not into doing macro counting, rotating macro counting, weighing, because no one has time and it's not sustainable. And I also believe it fosters a negative net, uh, narrative around food. That food is something we manipulate when really food is information and an energy exchange. Plain and simple. Okay. Information and energy exchange. But if you want to make sure that you're getting enough protein, you can do the, the food, the uh, calculus around it, okay, the math around it, which is taking your weight in kilograms. So divide your weight in pounds by 2.2 roughly. You get your weight in kilograms. And then you can times it by 1.2 to 1.6, sometimes even more, based on your activity level. Where this loses us is that it doesn't take into account 
your culture, your lifestyle, your stress level, uh, your activity level, what's going on around you, and your goals. Okay, so that's where the food calculus would come for me. Okay, if you want more clarity around the number, the grams of protein per day, Moni, DM me or PM me, okay, uh, protein, and then we can discuss. All right, does that sound fair? Give me a high five. Look at all the waves. Thanks, guys. Give me a high five. Sounds fair. Awesome. Um, so how do we know if we're not getting enough protein? Okay, five areas I want you guys to look at. Number one is the satiation factor. You cannot go three hours, two to three hours sustainably, meaning week after week after week, okay, not just day by day, um, between meals. Okay, we need that period of rest and digest in between meals. Snacks are only there if you need them. Okay, this is what we learn in the 3M system is looking at your energy demand through the day, making sure we're nutrition pairing to support that energy demand and the 3M accelerator as well. Um, so making sure that you can go that two, three hours at least between meals, you have satiation. Okay, if you're not, you're not pairing your macros in a way to support that. You're not getting enough protein in there. Okay. Number two is energy, okay? Your energy just sucks, okay? And or it tanks later in the day, okay? That's a key, key sign too, okay? Again, food is information, right? It tells us how to perform, work, athletically, life. It tells us how to burn fat and carbohydrates for energy, utilize those for energy, and it tells us how to feel, okay? It's information. So making sure that the energy is there and supported and consistently. Number three is cravings, okay? And I'm not talking the odd craving here or there, right? But I'm talking you're getting cravings, either sugar, carb cravings, right? The pantry has no, has no chance. Cravings, good old cravings, okay? Number four is that you are losing muscle instead of fluff. You're losing muscle. And I'm telling you right now, the number one thing we need to hold on to <laughs> for dear life as we age is our, our skeletal muscle density. It greatly decreases. Okay, we need to keep that. We can work out and resistance train to the cows come home. But if we're not supporting that nutritionally, you're going to be losing muscle density. Okay, so making sure that we're, we are losing the fluff, keeping the muscle. Um, that's why I said yesterday, remember yesterday I said I never, it's a red flag to me if I ever see a client, if their goal is um, uh, fat loss or weight loss, I never wanted to see it just go like this. We want to see it go like this. Okay. If it goes like this, you're losing water weight and muscle. Sorry. And the caveat of that is that when life gets in the way and you fall off the wagon, right, you'll gain tenfold back, which we don't want not tenfold, but you'll, you'll gain more than um, the loss back. Uh, number five out of my top three of knowing whether you're getting enough protein in your diet when you're over 40 and in our 50s even, is that you're just not getting stronger. Okay, here in my community, the Mojo Moni community on Instagram or on Facebook, uh, we're active. We love to work out. We love to move our bodies already. We know how to eat healthy and clean. Okay, um, many of us have come from an athletic background even or an active background and we just notice that in our workouts or maybe in our training, we're just not getting stronger or feeling the endurance increase from it. Okay, and um, the other big part of that is recovery. You just don't feel that you're recovering um, quick enough, right? You're recuperating quick enough. Should not be more than two days, even at this age. Okay, so that's, those are the five areas, okay, um, if you want me to repeat, just let me know the DM to, to uh, make sure that you're getting enough protein in your diet when you're over 40, all right? Now for the big juicy part, how do, you, how do, you, how do we utilize protein, okay, rather than just making sure, okay, I'm consuming it, I can do the math behind it if I want to, okay, I, I, I get certain areas to, to show and uh, give intel if I'm getting enough or not, but how do I know? Perfect. 
How do we utilize it for uh, fluff loss, fat loss, and energy? Number one, I love my numbers. I'm all about the list today. Okay, let me know if that's cool with you guys. Hopefully you have a pen and paper. Number one is, and these may seem very elementary, but foundationally, they're huge. Number one, spread your protein through the day. Okay? All too often we see the protein shake in the morning, the, hey, Karen, the, um, you know, the salad and whatever at lunch, and then a big dinner with a big protein and maybe a complex carb or, or, or a simple starch in there or something, right? We need to have that protein spread throughout the day in every meal. Why? Goes back to what we talked to you about yesterday. Protein is, can be very complex or it can be very simple in the, in the peptides and amino acids, but nonetheless, it takes a lot of energy for our body to break down, okay? Therefore, a lot of time Okay, to break it down. So we need that rest and digest period. Okay, we bulk it up all at once. It is system overload. Okay, spread it through the day plus the thermogenic effect. Okay, this isn't about burning those extra calories, but you are, it takes a lot more energy calories to utilize that protein. So spread it through the day. Make sure you're getting satiation from it so you get into those rest and digest periods. We talk about meal timing a lot in the 3M Accelerator and in the 3M, okay, to figure out the meal timing that works for you and your family. Number two, okay, to utilize your protein for fluff loss and energy is to switch it up, okay? I get consistency and in getting into routine and rhythm and having that smoothie every single day just as an example uh, for breakfast and then chicken being your main source of protein, okay? Besides it being super boring, <laughs> we want to make sure that we are um, getting quality and different incomplete and complete proteins out there, which I'm going to talk about here in just a second, okay? Plus, protein is very personal. Okay, it's very personal. There are some people that can't handle legumes, okay, like your, your grains and lentils and, and beans, okay? Um, I'm one of them. I can, lentils, I can't do, float up like a pig, okay? My system does not like it, causes digestive distress and inflammation, okay? So make sure that we're getting a protein that suits you and your family, okay, and your family. Don't force fish on them if they're not fish eaters, for example. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, and if you're watching the replay, let me know with replay too, right? So just remember, switch it up. It doesn't have to be boring. Protein's very personal, um, but we don't want protein to overstimulate our immune system and, and give GI distress and cause inflammation, okay? Cause inflammation. Number three, is making sure that it goes back sort of to number one, spreading it throughout the day, making sure you're getting protein at breakfast. I'm not even gonna dive in. If you're a faster, I'm not even going down that rabbit hole. Okay, fasting is not a diet. Just gonna put it out there. It's not a diet, it's a tool. Okay, been in the nutrition and wellness industry for over 25 years, in the arena of over 40 for the last six, seven. Okay, so it is a tool. Okay, um, but breakfast, I'm sorry, is very, very important when you're over 40. It sets the stage. Having protein in your breakfast is like pouring gasoline on your metabolic fire. We need it. Okay, we need it. Satiation, stabilize your insulin. Okay, it sets the stage for the rest of the day. So make sure you're getting a quality protein. Chia seeds, turkey bacon. Okay, I have a Instagram post. If you don't follow me on Instagram, Monica underscore Tup Home, that I did that I give you some top protein rich breakfast ideas that don't include smoothies, eggs, and bacon. Okay, to keep it diverse. So check those out. Um, but make sure you're getting it in the in the in the morning. Number four uh, is quality. Okay, not all protein is created equal, okay, that especially in the protein powder industry, nothing burns my boat more than seeing a protein powder that has over 50 ingredients in it, because when would you ever sit down for a meal and have 50 things on your plate? Your body doesn't understand how to sort, compartmentalize, digest things different, process things different. It's system overload. 
keep your protein powder simple. That's why in my last post I just did on Instagram, I said protein powder as a, as a source with five ingredients or less. Okay, the pumpkin uh, protein powder that I use right now, because my system likes it, my digestive system likes it, has good high quality protein in there, low sugar, has literally one ingredient. <laughs> Um, so make sure you're getting quality. Same thing with beef and meats, right? Uh, grass fed, especially at this stage of the game when our estrogen is already getting a little wonky on us with our progesterone levels too, right? Getting down and a lot of times we already know about antibiotics and hormones in our, our meat, if you will. So having uh, meat that's grass fed is very important. Okay. Um, and look, it comes down to as well, when I say not all protein is creating equal, that basically, this is a little bit of your biology for today, there's 20 amino acids that make up protein, okay, 20. 11 of those we can make on our own, nine of which we need essential amino acids, we need from consumption, okay, we need to take it in, okay, somehow. So when you see something saying this is an incomplete protein, it, mean, it, it means it doesn't have those nine essential amino acids that we need to ingest, okay? Doesn't mean it's bad, it just doesn't have them all. A complete protein has all nine, okay? Um, so I'll give you some examples. Incomplete protein could be uh, like nuts and seeds, vegetables, grains, legumes, a lot of those are considered incomplete proteins. They don't have all nine of these amino acids that we need to ingest. Complete proteins are more in the meat arena, like fish, eggs, uh, you know, tofu uh, is in there, obviously grass-fed beef. Um, uh, for plant-based diets, we're looking at uh, hemp seeds, uh, buckwheat is really high, quinoa, okay, in there, for give you guys some examples. So making sure we're getting quality per, uh, proteins and diversifying our proteins are actually helping, especially if you're a plant-based diet, making sure you're getting complete protein somehow, okay? Because we need those, again, those nine amino acids we need to ingest to be a part of our building block, okay? It's kind of like the, uh, what do you call the thing, Jenga, right? And the missing pieces. We don't want those missing pieces in our diet. We can be eating all the protein in the world, but it's incomplete, okay, we're having a missing building blocks. So diversifying what we're having, especially if we're plant-based or trying to focus more on um, upping our plant-based diet, then make sure you're diversifying because each one will have different amino acids to make it a complete, basically. All right, let me know if that makes sense, guys. <clears throat> let me know, give me a high five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and that wraps up how to utilize protein for fluff loss and energy when you're over 40. Again, great foundational principles to, to live by. Okay, a lot of us, we expand on this to be personal to you and our 3M system and 3M accelerator because it has to work in your life. Your activity level, your lifestyle, your goals are different from your cousins, different from your neighbor. Okay, I can't um, implore, is that a word? I can't state that enough. Okay, but uh, the things that we talked about today, how do you know if you're not getting enough and how to utilize it are great foundational pieces. I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you're watching on Instagram or, or um, Facebook and the replay. Let me know which ones on the five tips that I, or four tips that I gave you on how to utilize that you're going to do. Spreading throughout the day, switching it up, making sure you're getting in at breakfast and quality, okay? Again, if you want any more information, let me know. DM me protein and we can chat further, okay? On how to really niche this down for you and utilize it based protein as one of our macros um, for your goals. All right, totally makes sense watching on Facebook. Yay, Karen, awesome. All right guys, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, any questions, let me know, put protein. I don't know how I save this on Instagram. I'm gonna flutter around here a little bit. Um, 
um, to make sure that I can keep this for you guys to watch the replay. And uh, have an awesome day. Awesome day. Karen, I'm going to make sure I have protein in every meal. Amazing. Okay. Yep, protein at breakfast. I keep missing that. Diversify, diversify, diversify. Looks like you guys need to diversify your protein, please. Yes. I'm good with quality, but sometimes the price point. Yeah, you know what? Groceries are a gong show of price, uh, price right now. It's going to mean you being resourceful. Okay? You can still have quality food. Um, you just have to be resourceful in, in, in getting it. Local, okay, butcher shops, um, going in and buying in, in more in bulk and splitting it up between families is another way too. Okay? All right, guys. I'll see you later. I'm ending you on Facebook. Bye. And then let me...